And here we are at the finish line. But back up a minute. I've actually been oversimplifying this loop just a tiny bit. This series of six quick tech snacks is designed to remove that nagging fear that you're missing some important detail about what's involved in building a custom loop. First, I glossed over pouring water into your reservoir. On any reservoir you get, you'll notice that there will be at least one extra G quarter port besides the in and out holes. You can choose one of the extras to be your fill port. Generally, you keep it closed with a G quarter plug and then unplug it when you need to fill it. You need to make sure no liquid will ever spill while you fill it so your electronics stay dry. You can get special squirty bottles with long nozzles for this. You could also use a bit of flexible tubing with a tube fitting on one end. Just be careful not to pour water down the tube too fast or you might trap the air in and find yourself needing to open another port to let air out so the liquid can keep pouring. Also, beware of backflow causing liquid to come back out of your fill port when you turn the pump off. Put generous towels around the entrance to protect your electronics and work area. We also didn't make a way to drain the loop. This is critical for when you need to clean the loop or take it apart for any reason. Essentially, you want a hole to let the water out and you want it to be at the lowest point of your loop. Some reservoirs and uh, radiators have a nice low down extra G quarter port for this, but you can always create one yourself using a T-junction. Just like the fill port, you can use some flexible piping and a tube fitting to direct the flow away from your electronics and into a bucket. Also, because gravity is in play, we need some way to stop the flow when the draining tube is disconnected. The go-to tool for this is a ball valve, which is essentially a tap. Now there are some pitfalls with ball valves. Many ball valve fittings have G-quarter threads, so they screw directly into G-quarter sockets, or vice versa. The thing is, when you fully tightened it, it may not be facing exactly the way you want it to be. To address this, some valve fittings have rotary fittings, meaning that they have a section which can freely rotate. Some other fittings with G-quarter threads also have this feature. Oh, well, that's stiff. Ball valves and all rotary fittings have a reputation for being a leak risk. Bits Power fittings, this little Bits Power logo there, Bits Power stands alone in this regard for having an impeccable track record of not leaking. Don't turn the tap on a ball valve for the first time while it's dry. There must be water running through the valve the first time you turn the tap or you can damage it and increase the risk of leaking. Never force it to turn when it's dry. As an extra precaution, use a G-quarter plug to block up the tap when you're not using it. How do you know when the tap is on or off? Tap pointing along the pipe means it's on. Tap pointing across the pipe means off. There are alternatives to a ball valve such as a quick shut-off valve, which automatically closes when you unclip the tube. 